Good evening. It's my pleasure to call the Peoria Public Schools Board of Education meeting for April 26, 2021 to order. Ma Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Costick? Here. Mr. Kloss? Here. Dr. Rankin? Here. Mr. Walther? Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. Mrs. Ross? Here. President Shaw? Here. We have seven present. Thank you. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? We will go into announcements. Vice President Wilson. Yes, thank you, President Shaw. The Peoria High the Peoria High football team won the Big 12 championship this past weekend. Congratulations to the players, Coach Thornton, and the rest of the coaching staff for this great achievement. Okay, we'll start on this side. Mrs. Costick. High school graduations. Our three high schools will hold their graduation ceremonies on Saturday, May the 15th. The schedule will be as follows. Peoria High School at 11 a.m., Manuel High School at 2 p.m., and Richwoods High School at 4 p.m. And that's on Saturday, May 15th. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Kostick. Dr. Ranking? Staff Appreciation. The week of May 3rd through the 7th is Teacher Appreciation Week, and Wednesday, May 5th is School Nurse Appreciation Day. Please take time to thank Peoria Public School teachers and school nurses during a school year where their efforts deserve recognition more than ever. Thank you, Dr. Rain King, Mrs. Ross. Families keep prioritizing your children's attendance during the final month, uh, months of school. Every day is our in our classroom is vital for their future. Let's finish the school year strong. And don't forget to read 30 minutes a day. Thank you, Mrs. Ross. Mr. Klaus. School Improvement Day. Uh, Wednesday, April 28th is a School Improvement Day. Students <coughs> dismiss. Students will dismiss at 2. Students will dismiss two and a half hours early that day. Thank you, Mr. Klaus. Mr. Waller? Yeah, I have two. The Peoria Public Schools Board of Education will host a town hall meeting this week on the renaming of Thomas Jefferson Primary School. The town hall meeting will be held at 6 p.m. Wednesday, April 28th in the boardroom at the administration building where we're at right now. Uh, second one, Woodruff Culinary Arts Competition winners. Congratulations to Woodruff Culinary Arts students, uh, Markeisha Watkins and Ariel Cheney of Manuel High School, Caden Hickey of Richwoods, who recently competed in the Illinois Pro Start Invitational Virtuality this year. In the culinary division, Ariel Cheney took home third place and Caden Hickey won first place. In the restaurant concept category, Caden Hickey won second place and Markeisha Watkins won first place. Best of all, the state trophy remains at Woodruff for the fourth year in a row. Congratulations again to Woodruff. Thank you, Mr. Waller. First, I would like to acknowledge our bulletin boards on my right, Roosevelt, and on my left, Sterling. So I'd like to thank them for those bulletin boards. Summer school, the deadline for families to register for our exciting summer school program is this, uh, uh, this summer is this Friday, uh, uh, April 30th, sorry. This year's summer school, which will start in June and in mid-July across two sessions will feature sports, STEAM learning, learning activities, outdoor activities, and so much more. To register, ask your principal for an application or go to the district website and visit, and visit peoriapublicschools.org slash summer 2021. And don't forget, tutoring is available to all to Peoria Public Schools families at any time. 
If your student needs additional support through tutoring, contact your principal today to get your student connected to those tutoring supports. And I want to give you that date again, Friday, April 30th, this Friday is the deadline for summer school. Okay. No community contribution. Okay, moving on to district presentation. We have the strategic plan, Dr. Karat. Good evening, President Shaw, Vice President Wilson, and board members. Um, I'm very, very excited tonight. <laughs> there are a, a number of um, amazing individuals who've really worked very hard on what you're going to hear today regarding um, or strategic plan for the upcoming five years. But before I get, um, before I turn it over to Dr. Simpson, I would like to give a little bit of a background. Um, on January 25th, 2016, the board approved a five-year strategic plan for 2015 through 2020. And that plan, I first started then, this plan, uh, there was unprecedented collaboration um, with the, the creation of that plan. And the theme was our path to 2020. And there were five pillars of support in that plan. One had to do with uh, high standards and rigorous college and career curricula and engaged and relevant um, experiences. Um, then the other pillar had to do with systems of support. That is when we, ex we established the uh, Office of Social Emotional Broad Coach Booth in. Um, we, all of this came through our, our strategic plan. Um, the third pillar had to do with um, effective leaders, teachers, staff, and students, committed and effective leaders, teachers, students, and staff. The fourth pillar had to do with engaging families and communities. And then at that time, we were in a huge deficit. And um, the fifth pillar had to do with financial stewardship and operational excellence. And with the vision from Mr. Willis and his team, we were able to um, get everything back on track. And uh, there were just a lot of accomplishments for that, the five, those five years. So we knew um, it was coming to an end. And then right before the end of 2020, um, strategic plan expired. Right before it expired in October of 2019, a, di a diverse group of 50 educators, individuals from the community, students and parents met to develop a new strategic plan. The general theme, I, we had a really nice conversation um, and the theme and charge was really about reimagining education. And that was all prior, prior to COVID. <laughs> um, it is important that we, we have a strategic plan. Um, a strategic plan is an important document that um, communicate the organization goals and the actions needed to achieve those goals and uh, all of those other related items. So it's very, very important. The, the, the strategic, strategic plan actually really guides our work. So, um, so um, what we did, let's see. Yeah, so I just wanted to share the, the, the steps of a strategic plan. Uh, I, I'm reading my handwriting. So the steps include determining our strategic plan, determining our strategic um, focus. And for us, Dr. Simpson, would you say we talked a lot about REAM? That was a big focus, right? So it's like, and Ms. San Philip. And then after that, with the work, all of the partners, after that, you're prioritizing your objectives and your strategies and then you develop the plan, and then you execute and manage the plan, and then you continue to review and revise the plan. So um, I, and I, I think it's really important, as I said, for organizations to have strategic plans. So I asked Dr. Simpson to assist us, knowing that, um, again, the 2015-2020 plan was coming to an end and expiring ask him if he um, could help lead us in that process because he's been trained and um, has done a lot of work 
uh, with, with strategic planning, along with Mrs. San Philip, and they both agreed. And I just wanted to share with you that Dr. Simpson, actually he's a product of Pure Public Schools, graduated from Manual. He has spent 40 years as an employee of this district, 40 years. And I went back and I took a look. He was a social worker. He was assistant director of special ed. He was coordinator um, of elementary education, uh, special education, director of special services, an academic officer, principal. He was actually my son's principal. I don't know if you remember that, Dr. Simpson. And then he retired in 2009, and he has been my 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 supervisor when I worked for the district, along with Mrs. San Philip, and mentor, and, um, and they have been volunteering um, for a long time. But since I came back in 2015, it seems like they're full-time employees for Pure Public Schools, but they're volunteers. And it's the same thing for Mrs. San Philip as well. She has spent 31 years with Pure Public Schools, working well, for Pure Public Schools as a teacher, middle school administrator, assistant principal, academic officer, and, um, and so forth. And she also retired in 2009. So with that said, I just wanted to give some background, let you know that the two individuals that volunteered to lead our efforts for the 2021-2026 um, term year, they um, are well vested in peer public schools and actually have been trained by a Cambridge organization years and years ago. So um, you will hear about PPS's new draft vision, our new mission, our new values. You'll hear about objectives and strategies. All of that will be shared with you. Jan Lennon will also talk about effective protocols um, that we will use to evaluate progress. And then we'll open it up for question and answers, Then I'll talk about next steps. So at this point, what I'll do is turn it over to Dr. Simpson to say thank you, and um, he will get the team going. Thank you, Dr. Simpson. Thank you. You make me feel so old. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Dr. Kratz, staff, President Shaw, board members, uh, thank you for the opportunity of sharing the uh, proposed strategic plan with you tonight. Uh, the strategic plan process, as Dr. Krupp mentioned, we, we use the Cambridge model, <clears throat> which was introduced by Dr. William Cook uh, to Peoria Public Schools when we did our really first comprehensive <coughs> strategic plan involving the whole community. And that was done in 2002. <clears throat> in fact, I think Mrs. Ross, you may have been on the original planning team for that. Uh, Mrs. Sam Philp and I uh, were trained as facilitators in that model at that time. Uh, in October uh, 19, or 2019, we convened a planning team <clears throat> consisting of 63 educators, community leaders, parents, and students. I, I went back and we got an actual count, and it, it wasn't 50, it was really 63. <clears throat> Uh, we met for a day and a half to review and update the district's mission and vision uh, statements, to discuss strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, and to develop a set of objectives or goals for the next five years and strategies to achieve those objectives. Uh, as Dr. Krupp mentioned, the general theme of the planning team meeting was really reimagining education. Following the work of the planning team, we identified and trained action team leaders uh, <clears throat> for five action teams. We had uh, an action team for each of the five strategies that were uh, developed. The action teams were led by two uh, action team leaders, one district administrator and one community member. Uh, we identified uh, and began meeting as action team members uh, which numbered 116. We had 116 community uh, leaders, educators, and parents serving on the uh, five action teams. So they began working in January of 2020, and their task was to research the strategy and come up with action plans. Then <clears throat> everything came to a halt 
due to the COVID pandemic. Uh, work on the action plans to take a back seat to what really became real life reimagining education for the district uh, with virtual learning. Uh, the action team leaders regrouped last summer and they met through uh, the fall to complete the action plans. A lot of the meetings, most all the meetings were held virtually. We revisited the <coughs> district's values in the fall and drafted new values that are more relevant for today. Uh, we re reconvened the original planning team uh, the 1st of February, just a couple months ago, and presented our new vision, values, and action plans, all of which were unanimously approved by the uh, planning team. I'd like to share uh, the mission, vision, values, objectives, and strategies at this time. The, the mission we did not change. <clears throat> the mission is uh, ensure that each student reaches his or her full academic and personal potential and is a well-balanced citizen. Uh, this has been the mission of Pure Public School for a number of years. The v previous vision statement, <clears throat> which was done in 2006, was we take pride in educating and graduating each student prepared and inspired to contribute to the world. The new vision statement that came out of the uh, planning team was a reimagined education that ignites passions and empowers students to be responsible and successful. The values, uh, previous values, which these were done in 2002, uh, collaboration, respect, communication, excellence, integrity, commitment, accountability, all of which are very good values. The new values uh, probably are a little more relevant to today's uh, educational stat state. Um, grit, which means determined to succeed. Adaptability, uh, able to adapt, modify, adjust. Hope, which I think is probably one of the greatest ones here. Feeling of positive outcomes for the future. Equity, ensuring everyone has what they need. Respect, treating others the way we want to be treated. Connections, meaningful relationships between students, staff, families, and community. And innovation, creating and using new methods and ideas. So these were, are the proposed new values. The uh, objectives that the <coughs> planning team came up with, there were five. These are, these are really goals for the next five years. Uh, graduating and preparing all students for post-secondary education and our career. Recruiting, employing, and retaining highly qualified instructional and support staff. Assuring all students read by the end of third grade. Decreasing chronic absenteeism and increasing attendance. And increasing a positive culture, climate throughout Peoria Public Schools. The strategies to achieve those objectives, <clears throat> there were five, five that were developed. Uh, we will personalize learning and career experiences of students based upon their interests, passions, and choices. We will embed social and emotional learning into all learning and work experiences to address student and staff wellness. We will develop and implement plans to increase family, adult, and community connections and engagement. We will develop and implement plans to highlight and promote the positive activities and achievements of Peoria Public School students and staff. And five, we will reimagine education by implementing innovative approaches to education, such as, but not limited to, competency-based learning and 21st century skills. Uh, each, of the action each of the action teams, their task, again, was to develop action plans. And the, the heart of the action plans is really what you will see as the specific result statement. This is what we want to get in the end. And then the action steps become ways of achieving that uh, result statement. 
There's also a cost-benefit uh, analysis sheet that's uh, attached to each of the action plans, which tells both tangible and intangible uh, costs. Uh, at this point, I would really like to introduce our action team leaders and <clears throat> have them explain a little bit about uh, their teams and the development of their action plans. Uh, the first team is Strategy One Action Team members. These are the Action Team's members that were on that team. It was led by Dr. Nicole Wood and Jan Leonard. Uh, Dr. Nicole is not with us tonight. Uh, Mrs. Leonard is, so I'm going to have Mrs. Leonard come to the podium and kind of talk about their team. Thank you, Dr. Simpson. President Shaw, board members, Dr. Karat. It has been a privilege to be the community member that co-led Strategy One with Dr. Wood, Personalized Learning. Because there were similarities with Strategies One and Five, these two groups met together initially and we created subcategories. And those of us who were the co-leads took one or more subcategories and with our teams developed action plans. <coughs> The subcategory I had was redefining achievement. I had a great team, district personnel and folks from uh, faculty members from Illinois State University. Our group met several times during the summer. Our process was very much like all the other strategies. We conducted research. We came together virtually to discuss that research. We drafted result statements, and then we decided on our action plans. My team decided on result statements and action plans for the first two plans that you see on the screen, standards-based reporting and redesigning local assessments. A little bit about that. For plan one, standards-based reporting the central idea for that is moving the district to a standards-based report card. In the action plan, there is a core team who will determine the configuration, the language, and select teacher teams, and so on to get the plan going. The new report card will include academics and non-academics as well. And of course, that's all to be determined, all the specifics by the teams. We also are recommending a rollout in phases with a pilot as well. We included a recommendation finally for a great deal of communication with, for parents and the community. Our second plan deals with local and classroom assessments that are more aligned with standards. Again, there will be a core team that will determine all the configuration and logistics of how this is to be rolled out. There will be teacher teams to work on this plan, and there will also be assessment training. The thought, of course, behind this is that if the district is going to move to a standards-based report card, then classroom assessments need to be more aligned with standards as well. Finally, I would like to say that our team, as well as all the other teams, included language about equity, sustainability, and evaluation of effectiveness. Now my understanding is that Dr. Wood is on the line. Is that right? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, so I'll let you go with three, four, and five. Okay, sounds good. I wish I could be there in person with everyone. Um, but I'm excited about our strategy one, and uh, to tell you the truth, plans three, four, and five, actually through the pandemic, there have been silver linings, and I would say that pieces of these plans are already being implemented. Um, we're, getting, we're getting a little bit of a jump start uh, because we really did have to think differently uh, over the course of the past year. And so um, we're already moving in this direction and I'm really, really proud of our district. So um, plan three deals with designing and implementing a district-wide model of differentiation that provides equity and offers students choice in their learning products. 
Um, in plan four, we're going to look at the physical spaces in our buildings and look to design and implement spaces that are innovative and flexible. Um, and the, of course, uh, those things that are aligned with best practices in research. Uh, finally, in plan five, looking at our schedule within the day and reimagining that schedule so that our students have time for what we would call a custom learning time built into their schedule so that they can each achieve their personal learning plan. And um, actually, uh, over the course of, well, since January, we started writing individual learning plans for um, a large portion of our students already. So we are dabbling in this area already and um, just really excited about the progress we're making. So that's plans three, four, and five. Dr. Simpson, I, I just wanted to share with the board and um, the audience that Dr. Wood, it's, it's unbelievable what happened last week. Dr. Wood fell and um, tore her ACL and some other um, body parts. And Dr. <laughs> Dr. G is Dr. Gershnich. You won't see her this evening, and it's, and it's really serious. She has several broken, I think she broke her tibula, um, broke an ankle and one leg, broke another um, another bone part on another leg, and um, she's at the hospital, and she'll be there for a long, long time doing surgery and, and then therapy, and so just kind of keep both of them in our thoughts. So um, you may, they, they're not here because of, because of those medical challenges. Thank you, Dr. Simpson. Uh, strategy two. Booth. Good evening, uh, President Shaw, Dr. Crow, members of the board. Uh, I'd like to say, first of all, I was honored to be uh, selected as one of the co-action team members of Strategy 2. Uh, my other co-action team member, Lynn Anderson Loy, uh, was an awesome teammate uh, that I was very fortunate to work with, and she could not be here with us this evening. Uh, but the work was uh, definitely a, a unified effort and uh, a diverse group of team members that also I was honored to work with, a group of dedicated and passionate individuals that brought forward great ideas and great perspectives. Um, and, I, and, I, and I really would appreciate the opportunity just to say their names because of the amount of time and effort that they put into uh, strategy two of the strategic plan. Michelle Carmichael, Amanda Brown, Jerry Hamer, Dr. Alexander Ikujaku, Bernice Gordon-Young, Deanne Tucker, Dr. Tim Drew, Nicole Burrell, Lynn Lane, Dr. Eileen Setti, Jan Leonard, Tamika Rutherford, Kathy Rodriguez, and Kate Sherman. Um, just a diverse group of uh, um, experts and individuals that were passionate about this uh, strategy. Um, strategy two was we will embed social and emotional learning into all learning and work experiences to address uh, student and staff wellness. And from the, uh, this initiative, there were four plans that were developed. Uh, plan number one, develop and implement a, a human resources employment and professional learning development process that assesses the understanding of equitable trauma informed SEL, bias, cultural competencies, and practices of prospective and current staff. Plan number two, develop and implement district programs and practices that reflect care and concern for students, families, and staff based upon the Peoria Public Schools vision, vision and mission. And plan number three, design and implement professional learning development addressing equitable trauma-informed SEL and cultural competencies and practices. And then finally, plan number four, establish opportunities for empower, empowering learner agency to increase intentional student voice and for the improvement of school culture, climate, curriculum, and instruction. So we look forward to implementing uh, this strategy to the strategic plan. Thank you. Strategy three was uh, led by <clears throat> Susan Klesak and Amanda Camp. Good evening, President Shaw, board members, and Dr. Krott. It was an honor to be asked to be part of uh, the strategic plan for the district. I'm a Peoria Public School parent and volunteer. 
and to be asked by Dr. Simpson and Cheryl to be a part of this was, was really um, an honor. And you can't tell these two no to anything either. So <laughs> there was that. So we were, um, you can see we had a very large team. We had a very great group that came together. We, we did a wide ask between the district and community members. And we had a lot of response, a lot of great response from um, the individuals you can see on the screen. So our, um, our strategy, which, excuse me, I have to put these on. When this all started, I didn't need readers. But. <laughs> um, so ours was, we will develop, develop and implement plans to increase family, adult, and community connections and engagement. And so just to give you a little background, I'm going to talk a little different. Um, we did some research. We, we dove into the five essentials survey a lot for this because that is really, truly our, our parent feedback and what the parents need from, from us as a, as a school and as a district. Um, so as you can see from the, we had, we had lots of, we had parents representing everything from um, early childhood through the high school level on our committee. Uh, we had department directors, from administrators, principals, teachers. Uh, the Peoria Public School Foundation was involved. Um, United Way, Children's Home, OSF, WTVP. And we really just had a great group of um, nonprofits and business uh, leaders. So as uh, we mentioned, we, we did start this uh, back in 2019. And then March came. And, but before that, we had a couple of really great, great meetings. And we were able to identify four major areas of focus, which were building relationships, meaningful family engagement, understanding that that looks different for every family in our district, parent family supports, and community partnerships and connections. And when COVID came and we had to break down and we weren't going to be able to meet in person anymore, uh, Susan and I decided that we should break into two groups, smaller groups, because it'd just be easier to have um, more meaningful conversations uh, with a smaller group on, in a Zoom setting. So that's what we did. And uh, I'm going to let Susan turn over to Susan now to talk about all of our plans. President Shaw, Dr. Karat, board members, thank you so much. It, oh, I'll take my mask off so you can hear me better. One thing I will say about our team, it, it was an honor to be part of this, and I, I was part of the last strategic plan too, so this was really, really awesome to go through it with uh, Dr. Simpson and Mrs. Sam Phillip. But um, the, what really struck me about our team is the people cared so deeply about Peoria Public Schools and about our families, because we were about the family engagement and the community engagement. And they, they want so much for our kids, and it was very evident in every part of what they did. So, so we continued, and as we looked into the research and, and the survey data, we quickly understood that this strategy wasn't, it, even though it says increase family engagement, it wasn't gonna be about adding more activities and doing more of what we we're already doing, but it was really about getting to the heart of how are we gonna engage our families? What are we gonna do? Let's look at the barriers. Let's look at the data. What are our families telling us about why they're engaged and why they're not engaged? And work with the families to remove them or provide more opportunities. So before we could create these effective and sustainable structures and practices that would really embrace the diversity of our families, we really needed to define what that word engagement meant too. Because really, it's not a one-size-fits-all. We, dis we discovered, and it certainly is not just an event, but it's really a continuum. It's a, a process for, um, from our non-responsive families already to the already engaged, and how are we gonna meet the needs of all of those? So we came up with a lot of several actions to support our strategy, but one thing, as you can see, that's in plan one that you may have seen already is we really felt it was critical that there was a family engagement liaison or champion, someone to champion this strategy. The principals and Thomas and everybody in the district do an amazing job, but now there are so many resources available. And to ensure that these resources get into the hands of our families, we thought it was really critical. So that was a big part of our strategy is creating that position. The, uh, the, um, another important thing um, about that, we know that our families are the most powerful and influential teachers, so we wanted to make sure and provide resources, make sure they're equipped to do what they need to do as essential partners. And so um, the pandemic moved that into fast forward because we were talking about 
uh, technology and providing technology and the district of course responded immediately once uh, COVID-19 hit. So that's already, in, that's already in place and we're working on that. But we've learned a lot about what, what helped families, what they need more of. So that's, that's more that, uh, that can be worked on. A other action steps, we're creating resource libraries and piloting a text um, app for helping, also helping families. Similarly, the state of Illinois just launched uh, a text app for preschool and at Valeska families are using that and it's it's just uh, a couple of times a week families get a text with three or four lines to tell them to help them engage in conversation with their their children about different skills so <clears throat> we talked about that as well um, number three we know that district-wide families must be recognized as essential members of the learning team and we have to promote that district-wide response of culture. So one way in our plan is um, through professional development, anti-bias training, which again, the district got a, a jump start on that. That started in August and has continued through the school year and will continue. Tra more training on cultural responsiveness, embracing and valuing diverse perspectives. And part of that plan would be engaging families in the review of curriculum, maybe the development of curriculum, and providing opportunities for parents and teachers to work together, to come together in these workshops and have dialogue. Another really important one, number four, transform the structure and function of PTOs. And what we were hoping to do is create more voice and get more information from families about what, what they need what, and create that sense of shared responsibility and so before COVID, we talked about how can we transform those meetings? How can we um, create opportunities for families that have barriers to getting to the meetings? And we were very lucky to have a, a PTO president on our, on our team as well. And then once again, COVID came along and virtual meetings became the norm. So we'll talk, you know, so that, that will continue and we, wanna, and we wanna do more with that as well um, to really, uh, work with families that struggle and see, see what they need because every district, every building in the district is different. We have such a diverse population, diverse um, definition of families as well. So how can we support all of these families? And then um, the last one is to create the living inventory of uh, supports, district and community supports. And that's again, working with the community, that not reinventing the wheel, there are so many resources out there, but connecting our families to these resources and connecting these partners to our families. So again, that's where we feel like the liaison would be a tremendous asset to, to creating those connections. One other thing, um, once we were finished with our results statements, we had the opportunity to work with Dr. Bott, the equity officer, and she reviewed those with us, did some research and talked talk to us about maybe some things we could do to ensure that equity is integrated in each one of our each one of our statements, result statements, and also in our action plans. And then again, I would I just would like to reiterate Dr. Simpson and Mrs. Sam Phillip were amazing leaders with infinite patience. I'll just say for me on my part with my millions and millions of questions, but they provided the support we needed to keep us on track and keep us moving forward when things got derailed a little bit this spring. So thank you so much. And strategy number four was uh, led by Thomas Brooke and Andrea Tatora. Good evening, President Shaw, board members, and Dr. Karat. Uh, I'd like to personally thank you for allowing us to share what we've uh, worked on. And it's a, been a pleasure to be a part of this process. Uh, I think we all learned a lot. We made some new connections and we really had a chance to see how many people in our community truly support our district. So strategy number four, our action team was working on developing and implementing plans to highlight and promote the positive activities and achievements of our district students and staff. Everyone in this room knows that there are amazing positive stories happening every minute in each of our buildings. Uh, 
and in anything that the district touches. And we hope that this strategy will help to get that news out and shared um, internally and externally. So our members uh, included parents, district teachers and administrators, members from the Peoria Public Schools Foundation, representatives from City Hall, several nonprofits, as well as the Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we had folks who work in TV and media locally and public relations. Our process was similar to what uh, the other teams described. We first met in person in large groups. Uh, we all worked on research, so we looked at what other districts are doing with their social media and media plans, how they share information internally and externally, and use that to, as a base and a starting point. We also sort of looked at what Peoria Public Schools is doing today. Uh, we had some small group meetings. We divided up our strategy into different action plans. And one of our plans overlapped with those who just presented. That was communicating with parents and families. So we combined efforts on that plan. So Amanda and Susan did a great job describing that. Um, finally, I just wanted to share that even though we were forced to take a pause and then um, meet via Zoom to finish out this process, uh, we followed a pretty um, effective, I would say, uh, strategy of, we, we made sure that everyone contributed. Thomas and I would gather everyone's feedback. We would write up our drafts and it was shared among everyone so we couldn't be in a room together with a whiteboard with everyone contributing but we did our best to make sure this uh, final product that you have before you was as diverse as it could be and I will hand it over to Thomas to delve into each plan thank you so much Andrea she was just amazing throughout this whole process couldn't, couldn't imagine a better teammate to go through this so uh, President Shaw, board members, Dr. Kratt, thanks for having us up there uh, to describe this strategy for us. And uh, I just wanted to echo, you know, a little bit of what um, was previously said about our team. We had a great uh, group of people involved, um, a lot of expertise, a lot of great ideas that really, and they really, uh, you know, stuck with us through the uh, through the ups and downs of the process. But they, there was just, it was amazing to get into these meetings and just hear the the enthusiasm and the uh, and, and and the great things that everyone has to say and just coming together to, to you know, as, as, a, as a team and uh, with the strategy to um, continue to highlight in, in bigger and better ways what the district is doing. So um, one of the things we really wanted to make sure, and, and again, like I said before, is that everyone had super positive things to say and that there's, there's a lot of positivity out there. It's just kind of making a more cohesive uh, structure to, to that and, and, and finding new and in different ways and engaging in the new and different ways where you uh, we you can uh, convey positive feedback positive highlights positive stories about the district so that was um that was huge in in, in particular you know leveraging both um both the internal and external audiences um there if you think about it um you know given the couple thousand staff members we have and then all the all the parents um in our of our students, you know, we have anywhere from 30, 30,000, 20,000, 30,000 individuals that could be um, positive news bearers to everyone in the in the community here, and that's a that's a very valuable, that's very huge. Uh, not every organization has that, and that's why we wanted to really leverage that uh, the the internal uh, audience that we have while also um, reflecting that externally. We also know that uh, uh, social media continues to evolve. Um, Social media platforms um, continue to evolve. You know that the previous um, strategic plan was uh, from 2015, and you can <laughs> you can imagine how much has changed social media wise and, uh, and uh, just in the, the wider world from 2015 to now. And there's been a lot of there's new platforms that blow up, even from before the pandemic to now. You you, you almost can't keep up with it. So uh, that was a big one that we wanted to kind of uh, actually really. Um, instead of having an ad hoc approach to, you know, schools having social media platforms, you know, uh, we wanted to really kind of tighten that up a little bit. And as, as far as how do we how do we maximize those uh, platforms, and how do we um, how how can our how can we use those platforms to our best advantage? 
Um, and then finally, you know, we are very fortunate to have, um, we have positive stories to tell, and we have a lot of people to tell them. And, and really, our, our schools make up the, uh, you know, are representative of the entire city. We have, we have schools all across the, the city, and there are partners and neighbors and businesses and organizations that, that live in those, around those schools or work around those schools. And so, you know, the plan three, we really thought there was, a, there was an opportunity there to um, really engage and have, you know, have our schools be, you know, we, we can have, you know, big picture positivity and share that at, at a larger level, but there's just so, ma so many opportunities at a, at a smaller level in the, in the smaller uh, school community in the areas, you know, neighborhoods and businesses and uh, et cetera around each school. So just, uh, you know, a lot of great ideas and, and plans to, to leverage that as well. And so uh, we, have a, uh, we have three plans here, but we have a lot. We stuffed them all with a lot of action steps. Um, I know when we initially thought about this as a, a two or three year plan, there were, <laughs> I got some concerns uh, and some people concerned that, I, I don't know, this might be a little too ambitious. So I think we were, we were happy to see that it got extended a little bit, but we wanted to swing big uh, with this plan to, to really uh, continue to maximize and, and enhance uh, the positive image of, of Peoria Public Schools in our community. And lastly, we have uh, Strategy 5, uh, which was led by <clears throat> Dr. Gershnich, who is not here, and Anitria Shaw. I've asked uh, Jan Leonard to kind of fill in for uh, Dr. Gershnich. Uh, Jan was on that team. I think Jan was on almost all the teams. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, she will kind of help uh, Mrs. Shaw with that. Thank you, Dr. Simpson. Uh, Dr. Gersnich, I hope you are able to rest comfortably tonight, um, thinking of you. I'd like to start this one um, with a quote. Uh, there was a cognitive scientist by the name of Dr. Lauren Resnick, and she once said, classrooms are by design different than the outside world, yet their mission is to prepare students for the outside world. So how do we make point A, the classroom, more like the outside world? And that's what I'm reminded of with strategy five. Strategy five is all about giving students innovative experiences and authentic learning experiences that will help prepare them for their post-secondary life, college and career. So we have seven ambitious plans in this strategy Plan one, utilize design thinking, which is solving problems, solving real world problems. To create and implement project-based, problem-based, community-based learning, including design models such as gamification and experiential learning. Plan two, design and implement non-traditional, innovative and virtual learning options for students to earn high school, career, and early college credit. And Arnitria? All right, greetings, President Shaw, Dr. Karat, members of the Peoria Public School Board. Um, I'll, I'll get to plan two, but I just want to send well wishes to Dr. Gerson. She was the best partner to work with. Uh, we've partnered together in some other ambitious uh, endeavors that would also fall under strategy five. And as a researcher, she was great in finding uh, best practices and really looking at what other places are doing and having success with and not being afraid to take chances. And ambitious is certainly the word to use here. So for plan two, we're looking at designing and implementing non-traditional, innovative, and or virtual learning options for students to earn high school, career, and early college credit. Something that sounded very ambitious in spring, uh, fall of 2019, 2020, now it just seems like the natural next thing to do. Uh, we've, um, Susan and I have partnered quite a bit on the PACE framework, and it's the uh, Illinois mandate. It's the post-secondary, let me get it right, 
I always mix the letters up, post-secondary and career expectations. So some would wonder, you know, it's for grades 8 through 12, why would ICC, where I'm the Dean of College and Career Readiness, have an interest? Well, because this is our community and these are our students, and likewise, this is our future. So we have to think about the sequencing of that PACE framework where we are giving students those experiences starting in middle school to prepare them for what their plans would be after high school. And sometimes we find that um, students are ready for things that we didn't know they were ready for. For example, completing an associate's degree and a high school diploma at the same time. So we want to make sure that uh, when we're working with students, we looked at how to do things a little bit differently, but also how to expand on some of the really great things that Peoria Public Schools is already doing to give students that opportunity to earn early college credit or get those early career experiences that we know are important in the long term for students. Just go ahead with the other plans. Plan three, use competency-based learning. And of course, that has already started in Peoria Public Schools as a way to reimagine student learning to speed up, catch up, or slow down learning, as well as earn credit in more than one class at a time. Plan four, and this is where uh, strategy one somewhat crossed over, implement personalized and reimagined play-based learning to develop authentic learning experiences for students in varied grade levels. Plan five, as Arnitria uh, mentioned, the PACE framework, we will develop and implement personalized career experiences to meet the Illinois PACE framework that engages middle and high school students in learning about a variety of jobs, financial literacy, and employability skills. And I'll just add that when it comes to uh, what we've listed under strategy five, especially under plan uh, three and plan five, it's looking at that speed up or catch up model that we have the opportunity, that window of opportunity, especially in high school, to determine where students might need additional support or where we might be able to give them the opportunity to move ahead. So sometimes that looks like an accelerated program, but sometimes that looks like a transitional math or English program where students will not spend the first year of college in developmental classes, but we can actually bring those classes to the high school level so that the student gets out and is able to meet those milestones a little bit ahead of schedule or on schedule. So that actually takes us to plan six, gauge the academic progress of students and supporting them in meeting educational milestones on or ahead of schedule. And lastly, at plan seven, we will identify and provide students opportunities to demonstrate their voice and choice through personalizing their education plans and providing input on classroom and instructional approaches and innovative ways to reimagine how learning occurs. Thank you. As you can tell, we had some great action team leaders I'd like to publicly thank them. It was not easy uh, doing this with the pandemic going on, but uh, they, they muddled through. Uh, <clears throat> the proposed uh, strategic plan has been designed to ensure educational equity for all students with an emphasis on personalized education, social emotional wellness, teacher effectiveness, community family engagement, uh, learning environments, and optional learning methods. Uh, in addition to the, uh, the thick strategic plan that uh, you were given, uh, there's a couple additional items in the back. There's a list of the uh, action team members. And I, <clears throat> I would like to say we may not have made every name. <laughs> in fact, this afternoon, Dr. Wood uh, emailed me and she said, we have these additional people on our team. So, uh, I'll provide uh, Dr. Kraut with an updated list of uh, the community leaders. Um, there is also a glossary of terms found in uh, the action plans. A lot of times educators use terms that uh, don't make a lot of sense to everybody. So we put in a glossary. Uh, there's a list of Peoria Public School core beliefs, which uh, were 
determined, uh, I think, in that 2002 strategic plan, but still are very relevant to today. Uh, there's also a timeline for implementing the strategic plan steps annually. Uh, <clears throat> as you can tell, with all the plans, you, you cannot just roll everything out at once. So I had the, uh, the district uh, administrative leaders to kind of sit down and think out, you know, what should we roll out year one, two, three, four, and five, so that there's some uh, not everything is going out at one time. And so they have done that. And then the last uh, document here, the framework for evaluating the effectiveness of the annual activities. Uh, Jan has put together the framework, and I just plugged in the activities. So Jan, I don't know if you want to say anything more about the uh, evaluation framework. Thank you, Dr. Simpson. Um, each set of co-leads uh, was asked to present their strategy to Dr. Kraut's cabinet. And when Dr. Wood and I presented strategy one, one of the prudent things that Dr. Kraut asked was about cost, and not numbers quite yet, but um, what things are going to cost quite a bit. And Dr. Wood and I said, there is a lot of professional development built into this plan. And then her next prudent question was, how are we going to know if we're getting the bang for our buck? And which was a great question. So each plan, each set of action plans, has evaluate for effectiveness in it. But what she asked was for a common framework to do that evaluation. So um, she asked me to create a framework, and then Dr. Simpson took it from there, and he created a template uh, which will be used for all the plans to be evaluated on a regular basis. Thank you. And, and basically, this is something that throughout the year, uh, administrators can get together and you know, evaluate how they're doing uh, with those various activities. We've presented a lot of information to you tonight. Um, I would entertain if you have any questions for any of the action team leaders um, or well, comments. First, I, I would like to thank you, Dr. Simpson and Mrs. Sam Phillip, for your continued support of District 1, of uh, Peoria Public Schools, I should say. Um, I would also like to thank all of the action team leaders, especially the ones that can't be here tonight. We wish them a speedy recovery. Um, and all of the team members that contributed to the plan. So with that, um, board members, do you have input? OK, seeing none. Dr. Crowd, did you have any comments to close? I'll just ditto your, uh, ditto your comments. And I'm surprised Mrs. San Philip is very quiet. <laughs> any comments, Mrs. San Philip? This is uh, usually atypical <laughs> of you. You want me to say something? Sure, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and you know, I, I, I learned a lot throughout this process because they know, both of them trained me, I'm pretty objective focused with timelines and everything. And then when COVID hit, I, it was difficult to say to Dr. Simpson, hey doc, we have to just put it, park it on the side because we have you know, other things we need to do, try to, quickly transform from a traditional uh, teaching delivery system to the distance learning, remote learning, training our teachers, making sure kids have devices and individuals, uh, parents have connectivity, and a lot, of, a lot of you are also involved. So a quick thank you to every one of you. It was a pleasure working on the strategic plan. I look over here at Mr. Knapp and I look at Mrs. Ross in 2002, when we convened the very first Troy Public School Strategic Plan, they were both on. Who is sitting here? They were both on the original planning team, and I was fortunate enough at that time to be named director of strategic planning for the district. And so we 
came together with the community, with parents and students. And there was such value in that. There was. It was, it was amazing. And watching the plan roll out and the excitement. This is not a document that can sit on a shelf. It is a breathing, living document. And as we see all these action steps, what we have to realize is they may change a little bit. Because people start getting involved. Teachers try this, they try this. They're working in collaboratively. Some things work better than others. We use feedback. Because a year from now, we'll be doing our first district update on the plan, where we come together and we say, this is how things work. Here's what we accomplished this year. Here's what next year looks like. And here's some things that might not have worked as well. So we've switched maybe this action step for another one. The strategic plan unites a district and a community and parents and students. Because we're all working for one vision with one set of values. And our idea is to realize those steps. So the excitement of this is to see people come together and to live these values. And Dr. Simpson and I have told Dr. Karat that we're not going away. Um, the wor more work begins now, and we are very happy to help from afar, up close, or whatever we can do to help Peoria Public Schools reimagine education and realize the values and the vision for Peoria Public Schools. President Shaw, just quickly, um, just two things that uh, Mrs. San Phillip reminded me. Um, we will be monitoring quarterly also, and the public will receive a yearly public update and in, in regards to next steps board. The idea would be to bring an action item to you um, at our next board meeting in May. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We are now ready for presentations by audience members, and I'm going to review board policy 2 colon 230. An individual may address the board at, at the time for no more than five minutes, with further time allow, allotted as appropriate at the discretion of the chair, with the concurrence of the majority of the board. Total time on any one subject, um, Total time on any one subject shall exceed, tw exceed 20 minutes only at the discretion of the chair and with the concurrence of the board. This is a rule we have not used uh, since I've been on the board, um, but it does exist. Each speaker will fill out a request to speak to the Board of Education <coughs> card and present it to the board secretary before the meeting begins. So those are the rules under policy 2 colon 230. Our first speaker is Ms. Monica Wilson. Monica Wilson, I live at 1703 St. Clair Drive in Pekin. I was born and raised in Peoria, proud graduate of Woodruff High School, class of 1981. President Shaw and members of the board, Dr. Karat, <coughs> Karat good evening. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Monica Wilson, and I am the president of the PBPA Security Unit 114. Imagine, if you will, all of you coming to tonight's meeting in khaki pants and a polo shirt, with the exception of Mr. Walters, who looks like he's getting ready to go to Hawaii. I would like to point out that you all look very professional tonight. The school safety department takes pride in our professionalism not only in our day-to-day -day duties, but by the way we look. The reason we stand before you tonight is to ask that you table the vote on policy 5400. This is not a union tactic to delay a policy that we know needs updated. Unit 114 has been meeting with the board representative for a while now. However, talks have been stalled because we felt our position has not been presented to you in a manner that reflects our concerns for the students, staff, parents, and the community that we serve. The uniform portion of this policy that we have discussed in our meetings was to discuss the impact 
of our uniform change. As you already know, we have reached out to you via email with our concerns regarding the change in our uniform. These concerns are safety and cost. The uniform issue that impacts bargaining still has not been resolved and in our opinion was never intended to be resolved by your representative. In fact, your representative's response to our letter to you as the board was misleading and inaccurate. We are still under the impression that we are still bargaining the impact of the changes of the uniform, but yet we were notified after work hours late Friday that this matter will be going before you tonight for a vote. Is this good faith bargaining and or good collaboration? Many other issues in this policy are not bargaining issues, but why not get professional input from the people that do the day-to-day -day job? I believe Director Boone was not officially added to this policy committee until toward the end, even though he was present for all of the meetings. Yet, I still wonder how much of his advice has fallen on deaf ears. In closing, Unit 114 does not come before the board that often. We, only, we are only doing this because we want to be heard and represented fairly. It is not our goal to go public with these issues, but when safety is our main concern, we feel we have no other option. Thank you for your time. Our next, oh, sorry. Our next speaker is Mr. Tim Wolfmeyer. President Shaw, other board members, Dr. Kroc, good evening. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tim Wolfmeyer. I'm the vice president of the PBPA Unit 114. I'm also assigned to Manual High School as a lead campus safety officer. I'm here tonight to ask you to table policy 5400. This new uniform proposal there are many concerns with safety of our students, staff, guests, and officers themselves. Also, there will be substantial financial hit that will take pay take to pay for these new uniforms for every officer. It's gonna cost anywhere from $12,000 to $15,000 to reuniform all of our officers. Um, also, just spent some money on getting new patches. It was for our department to separate ourselves from the city of Peoria Police Department. These uniforms that we wear proudly every day help us identify with our students, staff, guests in our buildings. I know police reform is a must and we need to stay on top of it, but uniforms are not talked about that much in these plans right now. In fact, police reform is the re-teaching and training officers of what our department already does every single day. There's already been talks with state reps that they want to model state reform after our department and what we do. We are officers, counselors, mother figures, father figures, and friends that our students look up to and respect because who we are and what we do in these uniforms. Just last week, we had a student who was having some mental health issues. We had high school social worker and others trying to talk to the student about getting him some help. The student wouldn't talk to anyone except he asked for an officer in uniform. The student asked for the officer and confided in one of our officers because he recognized the uniform and felt comfortable. This student listened finally and agreed, and he went and got his help that he needed. A couple years ago, we had a large fight at one of our schools where students and parents were involved. One of our lieutenants at the time was wearing polo and khakis, and he went over to try to break up the fight and help separate uh, families. The parent ended up turning and throwing punches at our lieutenant. A uniformed officer had to come over, grab the parent, and yell at them that it was an officer he was hitting. The parent responded, I thought he was another adult trying to fight us. I didn't see his uniform. So with all this said, I ask you to please table this policy. Then I invite all of you to come out to our schools, observe what we do every day. Talk to students, parents, staff members. Get their opinion. Make your own decision and get all the facts. Not just what representation thinks you need to hear. Thank you. Next speaker is Ms. Bree Collins. Good evening, board members, Dr. Farad, uh, President Shaw, I'm sorry. Uh, this morning, I had a student come into my office and uh, we had our 
morning pep talk on expectations and how to start the day off right. I asked him for his thoughts on my uniform and what he thought I should, or if he thought I should be in regular clothes like he was wearing. He told me that seeing me in uniform reminds him to follow the rules. I'm 5'1". Taking me out of uniform and blending me in with the students that I work with that are already wearing a polo shirt and khakis, it's just not right. Uh, I am a role model in this uniform. I am a mentor, and I am someone they seek when they need help. I advocate for my students and give them a positive, not traumatic experience when someone is in a uniform. I'm asking that the board please take this over <clears throat> and move in the right direction for everyone involved and for the sake of safety. In the event of a crisis, are you looking for somebody in a uniform or somebody in polo khakis? Thank you. Next speaker is Mrs. Mary Fran Wessler. I will be brief, I promise. Uh, my name is Mary Fran Wessler. I'm the president of 6099 Peoria Federation of Support Staff. I am here to speak briefly tonight on two items. Uh, consent agenda item number 11, which is an agreement between Peoria Federation of Support Staff and the Board of Education. And I would just encourage you to please um, pass this. And I also want to thank members of the administration who worked with our board of um, our executive board to put together an agreement that both sides felt was fair and equitable. So I just encourage you to vote in favor of that agreement. My second item is number 19 on the deliberation agenda, which involves the police or the SRO uniforms. I work at Peoria High School. I've been there since 2003. I see every day what these men and women do for our students. And I, I also see how important those uniforms are because of situations like the couple that they've just discussed. I have personally witnessed situations where seeing an officer in a uniform will de-escalate a student where a less, I don't know, formal uniform will have no effect. If the purpose of putting people in polo and khakis is to humanize law enforcement and to build relationships, that's already happening. I see what our SROs do every day with our students. My room is across the, across the hall from one of the SRO offices. I see the students come in with SROs. I hear their tone of voice. I hear the respect that the SROs give them. Personally, not a lot scares me. But I will feel less safe if our SROs in not, are not in some kind of an easily recognizable uniform. And I, I urge you to also listen to the staff. I'm just one person but I'm pretty sure that my experiences speak for many people. Thank you. The next speaker is Mrs. Allison Yates. Hello, President Stahl, the board, and Dr. Karat. I'm here to address issues that I've addressed with the board before via email and feel that I've gotten no response and continue to see the, the way in which the board has handled this. One of these is the renaming of the six schools. The only thing that I can see that it connects all six school names is that the gentlemen happen to be white and not of color, and that's fine. But if we're going to change the names of the schools, please do it for another reason than just a knee-jerk reaction to social stigma at the moment. Those men all had different things that they were known for in history. If we need to change school names, then that's fine, but as a knee-jerk reaction, that's not fair. In addition to the history books, my, my stepson will be going to Richwoods next year. When signing up for his classes, he was asked which history class he would like to take. His normal history class that he's been taking for the last several years, or the Black, six, Black 365 history class. If we have a problem with the history book, then the history book itself needs to be addressed. The history is not of one side or another. History is facts. Facts don't change just based on social stigma which I felt that the board this year alone has taken into high consideration. I understand that the world outside is very chaotic at the moment, but by continuing to discourage children from learning from all sides and to choose only the side in which the social stigma suggests does not help those students. In addition to that, um, 
I did not agree with, and I hadn't addressed this at the time, when the school was out for so long. That has harmed all these children. And now hearing that you're wanting to change the uniforms as well, that's not gonna help these kids. They've already had enough change and the separation from the school as it is. They don't need additional changes in their lives at this point. And my last and final uh, thing, which is what my stepson asked me to address with you guys, is the fact that you're sitting here asking for families to be involved and yet the eighth grade graduation, although not a high school one, has been changed from five o'clock at night to nine in the morning. I don't know about everybody else in this room, but speaking from my husband and myself, we had to work the entire time and we're still working. My husband works for the city of Peoria, so he cannot stand and watch on his phone in the middle of the street an eighth grade graduation that is now being done virtually. If we are very scared of this COVID situation, and don't feel that this is safe, then why did you let the students back? Why do you let us into the board meetings? This is not an ideal situation for these students. And according to my son at Mark Bills, the students are very disappointed their parents can't be there. And now you're telling us that you want us to be able to watch during working hours. Please take into consideration how you want the families to be able to attend and be part of the schools. Because right now, that's not what it feels like. Thank you for your time. Next speaker is Mr. Terry Knapp. Never ceases to amaze me when I come to a board meeting. How can you, the number one thing in the 2000 uh, episode of strategic plan, if you go back and look at it, is the word safety, safety. Safety was the number one issue and has always been the number one issue. And you sit here and fight with your security people. It's ridiculous. You, you go out for a day and teach in a classroom. You go out for a day and be a security guard and, 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 and learn why they want uniforms, why the teachers want them to have uniforms. You know, I, I, like I said, I just can't believe this. I gave you a thing tonight, and I'm going to refer to this, so hopefully you'll read it. Uh, it was not where this thing has gone. I was one of the principal people on the strategic plan with Dr. Royster, Dr. Dolan, who was uh, educator supreme, psychologist, psychiatrist, everything else under the sun. We paid $80,000. Jan Deisler, who I eat breakfast with every Tuesday, was the board president at the time. You know, those people got it. They spent $80,000 to get a plan, okay? Did we follow that plan? Go back and look at the plan. We didn't follow that plan. We're going to have a new plan and didn't even follow the old plan. It's craziness. Uh, Mr. Dutro, I asked him back here, he can't even figure out what role he's playing in this. You understand? He has, I, I guess he may have been, it may have been mentioned to him. I guarantee you, I was a principal player in that. I represented 1,250 teachers, and they were all considered valuable. They're not considered valuable. You know, the, the chief negotiator stands up here and calls the superintendent basically a liar about negotiations. They spent $250,000 bargaining in that with two Two attorneys, we don't even have an attorney. We got, we got a strategic plan group. Three of them, we got two of them that are running it are not even citizens of Peoria. I mean, you know, I'm sure Miss Wilson's on it. She's not a citizen of Peoria. I mean, the, the major players seem to be people that are not even living in Peoria. I live in Peoria. How did I get passed up for an invitation to be on this strategic plan? I come to every school board meeting and you people can't stand it. You can't stand to be told the truth. You want to learn something else? Hey, it's sad. Go out and get in your schools. This right here, read it. It's, it's the, uh, and you've read it, you've heard about it, Burley School, where people spend, send their kids there for $58,000 a year. It's a private school. It's for, it's for grade school kids. And they go through here step by step. This country is headed for disaster, and you're pushing right behind it. You, want, you, want, you don't want 1776. You want 1619. Tell the truth. 
Tell the truth. You don't care what these kids go through. The disaster that's going to happen across this country, it's not going to happen because people like this have got it figured out. They've already said, we're pulling our kids out of the school because they're going to follow the Black Lives Matter people, the Democrats that are collecting money from industry and giving to black Democratic candidates and white Democratic candidates, and they're not giving any of it to black Republican candidates. It's sad. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. This country is screwed up, and you're falling in right behind them. Response to audience presentations, Dr. Crutt. Thank you, President Show. We continue to listen and take notes on all the um, individuals who present to us. Uh, one of the things I do want to have a parent who presented uh, specifically in reference to eighth grade graduation um, and the time. Um, Dr. Bell, can we, I know we are going to stream, and I remember we responded over the weekend to one of our parents about providing, ensuring that mm -hmm. parents have provided CDs, um, some sort of recording. So will, mm -hmm. will mom have a copy so that dad after work can also view the, the graduation at any time? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that is the plan. So are that are you online? For yes, He's I'm on. here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, that's the plan. Uh, the principals and I discussed it a couple of weeks ago. Um, for those parents, for a myriad of reasons, uh, who cannot attend, uh, you know, live the live streaming, would have an opportunity to have a keepsake of their child's eighth grade promotion ceremony by receiving either a DVD or a flash drive of the ceremony. And so that's the plan uh, to make sure that they have that keepsake. Thank you, Dr. Bell. So that's all I have, Dr. President. Absolutely. Um, Dr. Bell or Dr. Karat, so for this keepsake, if parents aren't able to attend at nine o'clock, is it going to be a cost or are they getting it for free? Free, Okay. absolutely free. Thank you, Dr. Rankin. Yes, oh, I'm sorry, it's President oh. Shaw's meeting. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to make sure that um, the board, especially board members that may not know, that um, as, as it relates to the SRO um, policy, this information and this plan has been in place for a number of years. When Mr. When Chief Collins was here, uh, they took some trips to the other areas, and they all agreed that they would would love to have the the, the different uh, different uniforms to promote, um, you know, the uh, relationships with kids. So I mean, I'm not sure where it's coming. I have the the book from the last time when they had already agreed on the polos and the and the pants. And now it's just coming to the policy piece. I'm not sure what's, uh, what the misunderstanding is. Mr. Boone was part of that group that went away. I don't know where. Is he here? Is Chief Boone here? No. Okay. I'm, I'm online if you need me. Okay. Mr. Wallace. Yeah, I had a question. I guess I'm still a little bit confused. Why can't we do the graduation with the parents present at five or six o'clock? I don't understand. I think that the young lady back here gave a thing with it. We're in school five days a week. We're having mixed thing with it in here. You know, I'd like to have a keepsake, but I think these parents want to be present. They want to see their child walk across the aisle at that point in time. I don't understand why we can't do that. I guess that's a question I have. Dr. Bell says he's talked about this, but I'm getting information from parents. They want to be there. They would just like to be there for their graduation. It, you know, and it's really a middle school thing that we're talking about. We're talking a handful of schools, and I think we need to rethink this issue. I think we still have time to, to 
revisit this issue. And, and I can understand as, as a parent wanting to have see my child go through that and stuff with it. I appreciate the keep sick thing. It's not the same. It's not the same as being there as a parent. So. Any other comments on the uh, on public comments? Hi, Dr. Karat. Can you hear me? This is Chief Boone. Yes, we can. Uh, I was not a part of that committee that Greg Collins went to about the uniforms. I wasn't present for that. Dr. Bell? Yeah. Go ahead, Dr. Crock. Yeah, um, so we had a long conversation about Mr. Walder's question, which is a very good question. Can you provide some insight, please? Sure. Thank you. Um, yes, ma'am. A couple of weeks ago, when I met with the cohort of middle school principals, I asked uh, Josh Collins, since he's our go-to person, our point person concerning updates from the Centers for Disease Control uh, and the LA Department of Public Health in terms of any and all updates uh, regarding COVID-19 uh, to attend the meeting. During that uh, meeting, I guess it was April 13th, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Josh gave us the latest CDC recommendations, uh, specifically regarding graduations. If we were to have graduations outside the new or the latest CDC recommendation says no more than 25% capacity of that space. If we were to go indoors, the new CDC recommendations, and I'm holding them here in front of me now, says no more than the lesser of 50% of room capacity. And so it's either inside 50% of room capacity or outdoors 20% capacity and the principals you know debated 35 40 minutes the pros and cons and we all came away with the consensus that there was no way that if we were to give say a family each family two tickets that we could control or police if you will those that chose to just walk up if you have a family of five or ten even though each student was only issued two tickets there's no way we can control you know, those other six, seven, eight family members are just showing up. And so the decision was made and a consensus was formed to have the eighth grade promotion ceremonies at each school indoors during school hours. And for those parents, as I said a moment ago, for whatever reasons could not attend or who lack internet access uh, to be given an opportunity to still view the recorded uh, medium uh, their child's eighth grade promotion ceremony. So it's all based on the latest CDC recommendations. Mr. Klaus. Uh, just one suggestion. Um, if we utilize Peoria Stadium and do some sort of staggered format like we do with uh, the Bradley convert, uh, high school graduation, um, how many middle schools do we have currently? Excuse Five me. or six? That's more like ten. Mm -hmm. well, Correct. Well, you'd have to provide yeah, transportation. Mm -hmm. It gets messy. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. stadium is not really not safe. I don't know if you've seen the track. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, we even talked about in our meeting a couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, the renting of chairs and so on and so forth, if we were to even go down that road, and it becomes that, that issue of, you know, I can't get the chairs on, on the date that I selected, so therefore I'm not going to have enough, you know, seats and so on and so forth. So it, it becomes a logistical nightmare uh, to try to plan it out for all 12 middle schools or K-8 buildings with, you know, eight graders in them to try and do it within that week's time span. Dr. Rankin. Um, what is 
Now I know that some people may not see them as equivalent, but I'm gonna just play the card that they are equivalent. What are we doing for high school graduations that we can't do for middle school graduations? Yeah, honestly, Dr. Rank and I, yeah, I'll take you know, that I haven't one, delved in that. I'll take yeah. that one, Dr. Bill. So <laughs> if, okay. yeah, thank you, sir. Um, eighth grade, it's actually a promotion. It's not considered a graduation. Right. So um, there is a distinct difference. Um, so that's, that's the premise. They will have an opportunity to graduate from high school, but th that's a distinct difference. One is just a mere promotion, whereas the other one, it's a graduation with the involvement of board and all of the other requirements by the state. Right. And I'm completely on board with that. I'm in the same boat, but I know not everyone has that same sure. understanding. I guess I'm talking about the event itself. What are we doing for the high school events that we might not be able, like that we can't do for middle school events? Yeah, absolutely. Great question also, the first one. So, um, you know, when I was at Manual, we had 7th through 12th. And so we did have a very nice 8th grade promotion. Not everybody all parents were able to attend, but it was really just recognizing. Um, so Doc, what do you guys have on your agenda? We would recognize like the top, you know, the top reading student, the top science student. Mm -hmm. um, they may have a little song. Um, then obviously recognize their names, call them. Um, Correct. So different schools handle it differently, but for the most part, mm. it's just helping them, like we're putting closure and we're transitioning. But it's, we already have graduations planned, right? Like Richwood's graduation is already planned, like for this year. Yes, like, for the 15th. And so what's happening at those graduations that we couldn't do? Like, could we use the chairs that they put up for the Richwood graduation for all the middle school? You know, like, is there a way that we can combine yeah. them at all? Yeah, so it's a big production and, and we have, you know, the graduation at the promotion at the the middle schools it's always handled by the middle schools at when it comes to graduation for the high school central office is involved it's a huge i don't know if you saw even the online was like an amazing project that we completed successfully so um it's just a lot of time and effort and you know for the younger ones they're just beginning and we don't want them to rent limousines and, <laughs> you know, do, yeah, that's what they used to do. Yeah. When we were at Roosevelt, we had graduations and then we cut it off because you would look outside and you have five, yes. So it's more personalized at the school building, um, age appropriate for them, whereas high school it is, it includes the board, you guys are included, um, central offices, actually Thomas, from day one when we started. Um, he's my representative um, and he works with the high school principals and we have a routine. We have, we have the, you know, the program and the, there's quite a bit that's involved in that process for the, yep. So the, the idea is the, at the, the schools, the principals and their committee can design something also very tasteful for their for the eighth graders, the promotion services, promotion ceremonies for the eighth graders. High school is a lot more elaborate. Question, um, Dr. Rankin, now are you asking what it normally, or are you asking for this year? For this year, like, is there a way that we could use what they're doing for graduation and tack on, but I'm hearing that it's yeah. too much of a it is, and then the times are not aligned because the high school graduation will be the 15th. And Dr. Bell, when are your babies graduating? <laughs> um, it's uh, throughout the last week of school, uh, each day that Monday through Friday. Um, so they select the, the day, um, the last week of school, mm -hmm, so about two correct. weeks later? Mm -hmm. Yes, a couple of weeks after high schools. And, and, they're oh. and, and some of the kids are so excited because they're going to get out early. Right. After right. their right. after their right. ceremony, right. ceremony yeah. they're going to leave her. Okay. 
Ma'am, I, I can't recognize you at this point. Um, if you would, please follow up with uh, the administration. Um, Will you respond to me this time? You can yeah. follow up with me, I'll respond. Was I part you, of that email? Can you call me back then? Yes, I'll be happy to. Please don't send the principal for me. Pardon me? Uh, please don't send the principal to call me then. I'll call you. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll be happy to. May I suggest you call it a promotion then and not an eighth grade graduation? Yes, okay. yes ma'am. <laughs> Okay. Item number nine, approval of open session minutes uh, from January 11, 2021. Is there a motion to approve? Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the minutes from January 11, 2021? Hearing none, please call the roll. Mrs. Kostick? Mr. Kloss? Aye. Dr. Rankin? Aye. Mr. Walther? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mrs. Ross? Aye. President Shaw? Aye. Seven ayes. Motion carries. Okay. Informational items. Item number one, proposed expenditures over 2,500. Questions for Mr. Willis? Seeing none. Item number two, report of request under the Freedom of Information Act and the status of such requests, Dr. Karat. Thank you, President Shaw. Since our board meeting report on April 12th, we received zero new, new requests, and there were no pending requests noted on, on April 12th. Um, all of them were completed. So to date, we have received 11 requests for the calendar year at a cost of 350, I'm sorry, $550. Thank you, Dr. Karat. Vice President Wilson, we are now ready for the consent agenda. Thank you, President Shaw. The consent agenda consists of the following items. Item one, gifts to school district. Two, payment for travel. Three, human resource report. Four, renewal of consolidated federal grant plan. Five, IHSA membership renewal. Six, acceptance of changes to intergovernmental agreement with perfect intergovernmental agreement to reflect updated terminology item seven head start slash early head start cooperative agreement with pcceo regarding use of facilities eight head start early head start interagency agreement with pcceo regarding child find and special education services nine acceptance of added children's home services for after school grant program 10 calvin coolidge toilet remodel project 11, agreement with the Peoria Federation of Support Staff, and 12, settlement agreement with Pierre Whitley, Cleo Whitley, and Christopher Whitley. And that is the entirety of the consent agenda. Thank you, Vice President Wilson. Are there any items board members would like pulled for a separate vote? I would. Mrs. Ross. I'm going to pull um, number three. Number three, Mrs. Ross. Other items? Seeing none, can I have a motion to adopt the consent agenda with the exception of item number three? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda with the exception of item number three? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Costick. Ms. Costick. This, no, this is, on the, this is the consent agenda with the exception of item three. Mr. Kloss? Aye. Dr. Rankin? Aye. Mr. Walther? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mrs. Ross? Aye. President Shaw? Aye. Seven ayes. Motion carries. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt item three? So moved. So. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Mrs. Ross? Uh, I pulled it for a second, uh, separate vote because there are several items that I just cannot in good conscience support. Other commentary or other discussion on item three? Well, I just want to say I agree with Ms. Ross on her statement that she just made. 
Okay, and item three is human resources report for those listening. Um, any other discussion on item three? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? Mrs. Coste? Mr. Claus? Aye. Dr. Wanking? Aye. Mr. Walther? Aye. Mr. Wilson? No. Mrs. Ross? No. President Shaw? Aye. We have five ayes, two nays. Motion carries. Okay, item, oh, let me move down. Deliberation agenda, we have policy number seven colon, item number 13 is seven, policy seven colon 185, teen dating violence prohibited, proposed action that the Board of Education approve the proposed revision to policy number seven colon 185. Is there a motion? Moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on item number 13? Seeing none, Madam Secretary. Mrs. Costick? Aye. Mr. Claus? Aye. Dr. Ranking? Aye. Mr. Walther? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Mr. Wilson? I'm sorry. Yeah, mute button got me. Aye. Mrs. Ross? Aye. President Shaw? Aye. Seven ayes. Motion carries. Item number 14, policy 5 colon 10, equal equal opportunity. Equal Employment Opportunity and Minority Recruitment, and this is a revision to that policy. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion on 14. Seeing none, Madam Secretary. Mrs. Coste? Aye. Mr. Claus? Aye. Dr. Ranking? Aye. Mr. Walther? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mrs. Ross? Aye. President Shaw? Aye. Seven ayes. Motion carries. Item number 15. Is that yeah? Fifteen policy number seven colon ten educational equal educational opportunities and this is a revision to that policy. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion. Hearing none. Madam Secretary. Mrs. Costick. Aye. Mr. Claus. Aye. Dr. Ranking. Aye. Mr. Walther. Aye. Mr. Wilson. Aye. Mrs. Ross? Aye. President Shaw? Aye. Seven ayes. Motion carries. And I'm number 16, policy number 5, colon 100, staff development program. This is a revision to that policy. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion on item 16. Seeing none, Madam Secretary. Mrs. Scott? Aye. Mr. Claus? Aye. Dr. Ranking? Aye. Mr. Walther? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mrs. Ross? Aye. President Shaw? Aye. Seven ayes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number 17, policy 5 colon 20, workplace harassment prohibited. Is there a revision to that policy? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion on policy 520. Seeing none, uh, Madam Secretary. Mrs. Coste? Aye. Mr. Claus? Aye. Dr. Ranking? Aye. Mr. Walther? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mrs. Ross? Aye. President Shaw? Aye. We have seven ayes. Motion carries. Item number 18, policy number 7, colon 180, prevention and response to bullying, intimidation, and harassment. This is a an update to that policy. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Um, and there is a typo in there, and harassment. There should be a space in between those two words, but it's been moved and seconded. Discussion, no, no discussion on item number 18, Madam Secretary. Mrs. Costic? Aye. Mr. Claus? Aye. Dr. Reinke? Aye. Mr. Walther? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mrs. Ross? Aye. Aye. President Shaw? Aye. We have seven ayes. Motion carries. 
Item number 19, policy number 5, colon 400, campus safety officers. This is a revision to policy 5, colon 400. Is there a motion? It's a motion. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Discussion? Mr. Walters. Yeah, I'd like to discuss. We've had uh, conversations from several of the officers who are here, of which I totally agree with. Um, a little bit of history. Um, in a previous life, I was a union organizer and absolutely was involved in the organizing of the, of the campus safety offers a long time ago. And uh, that has evolved in, in a number of ways. But having seen these officers and through, I think, good leadership from this administration and uh, Chief Boone, um, I've seen these people in action. They work to de-escalate. And I think there is a difference of having that uniform in school um, because I think it's for the safety of the kids, it's for the safety of the officers, it's for the safety of the faculty. And so um, I think there are two issues that I have here is one, that if we would go ahead and pass this, uh, I'm not blaming the policy committee. In fact, I'm complimenting the policy committee and how many policies they propose to us. They've done a lot of work. Um, but there is a differentiation between um, adopting a policy <laughs> in adopting a policy that's gonna change a collective bargaining agreement, which is in effect what we would be doing. Um, the, the district in proposing this, there's a difference between policy and CBA and what we're gonna do if you would adopt this, we're probably gonna guarantee that we're gonna have a complaint filed with the Labor Relations Board because this is a different, what we're trying to do is change a working, existing working condition. And we shouldn't be doing that. This shouldn't be presented here as that. And so um, I would respect what the, what the union has said and uh, make a motion to table this so that we can go back and discuss this issue because I think um, both sides need to bargain in good faith about this, but this is a bargaining issue. This is not a policy issue. And I'm not blaming the policy committee because that's, they're doing their job. Um, I think maybe we've not gotten good advice from, from the people who are bargaining for us, and including our law firm. They shouldn't have been even allowed to be brought here for this. So I will make a motion to table um, policy number 19. Second. Okay, this has been moved and seconded to table item number 19. Um, well, first is there discussion um, so, Walter, one of the things, what I'd like to know is um, the, um, in, I understand in the tabling, but I don't understand the, the, the bargaining aspect of it. Is there some clarification on what this really is? I could make my point. You could ask one of the attorneys what we're asking, what, the, what we are as the board, according to this policy thing, is act, asking to make a change in working conditions. Changing the uniforms is a change in working conditions. That's a mandatory subject to bargaining. And uh, unfortunately, um, our representative didn't understand that. And so we're doing a policy thing when it really should be a bargaining issue. And so I think by tabling it, we'll let it go back to being a bargaining issue and, and not an issue of policy. So. Okay, I would um, I would like some input from the attorney. Hi, President Shaw. Um, yes, I think that it would be a good idea to table it. Um, changing in uniforms could be considered working conditions that do need to be bargained. Okay, thank you, Attorney Satterley. Um, with that, is there more discussion? Uh, the only thing that, that I would say is that, uh, Mrs. Ross, I understand you know, uh, several years ago when we did, we did have um, this discussion in regards to the uniforms. Um, it's a new day. And, and the things that we saw going on in the schools five, seven years ago is a lot different than what we see, what we see now. Um, it's, a comfort, it's a comfort to me if I go into a school to know that um, I can identify the SROs versus a teacher because of the fact that you see many, many male teachers and female teachers and personnel that are in khakis and 
polo shirt, so I can't differentiate who is who. So the, um, you know, I will, I will, um, you know, I will not support them going into khakis because I think they need to be um, identified. You need to know who they are and not have to guess who they are. Um, their presence needs to be, they, they need to wear their, their presence. They need to be able to be easily identified, not only by the students, but by the staff. And, and you know, that's, you know, again, like I say, it's a new day. It's, it's not like it was five or seven years ago. Uh, and it's, it's a sign of, it's a, a uniform is your, is your armor, it's your, you know, so I, I you know, I would, I would not support changing the uniform. I don't care whether it was bargaining or what. Thank you. Any other discussion before we move to? Um, Although it's been tabled, and I know that once it's tabled, that's it. I do want to. I do want to say, I, I think people have been misled to the fact that that you're going to see somebody in, in, in a polo and khaki. If you go to the mall, that's what you see. You know, and and it's not like you, you're just going to see another person. Uh, but the, I mean, the officers have their all their garb in their and their badges and that kind of thing. It's, it's no way you're gonna be able to, you know, miss, miss, uh, um, miss somebody that's in authority. Well, but, I, I, mean, I'm, I, I do wanna clarify one thing. It has not been tabled. It has been moved and seconded and we're discussing it, but it has not been tabled yet. We have to vote, but- uh, Can I get Robert's rules? I think once it's been moved to be tabled, there is no discussion. Yeah. And, and, that, and, yeah. and that was my understanding of tabling as well, but and when I brought that up at a previous meeting, um, we actually did go into discussion. But yeah, you're right. Uh, as far as Robert's Rules of Order, once it's been moved and seconded, we go to a vote. So I just didn't want us to minimize or uh, minimize the, uh, you know, the identification because I think that's what's happening. That you know, they're minimizing the identification of a person. Oh, uh, Dr. Ike, Dr. Kijaku. He's out of order too. I'm sorry. <laughs> he can't be out of order. Yes, he can be. We've got to vote on this. We should be voting on this right now. There should not be any discussion. In fact, your discussion was out of order. With all due respect, Ms. Ross, it should be a vote. And I'm calling for the vote. Like I said, we, your, your interpretation of Robert's Rules of Order is correct. However, we did break protocol on another issue so in, in this case, I have allowed discussion on this issue. I did not go by the strict Robert's Rules of Order on discussion. I don't, I, 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 you know, I don't see what harm we would have by getting input on this before we vote. But like I said, your interpretation is correct. I'm not, I, will, I won't deny you that. But we've broken protocol before on this. Dr. Eager Jack. Uh, thank you, President Shaw. Um, I just wanted to uh, say that this particular issue is a unique one. Unique in the sense that there's a policy that governs the operation of the CSOs, campus safety officers, as well as a collective bargaining agreement. All right, so this is a, a unique situation. Um, the current policy that you have, it's outdated. Okay, and part of what the policy committee has been doing really is updating it and uh, along the same lines, trying to uh, address what it identified as a uniform concern. Um, and so the committee, policy committee, has been talking about this for the longest time. And as I said, this has been researched to death. By that I mean, when this policy was brought up, we reviewed it. I reviewed it personally as a staff member. The, the committee also reviewed it and found a reference to the contract. So I went to the contract, that reference to the contract, and reviewed what that reference in the contract says. Let me read that to you. Section Article 26.3. 
It says, employees shall be consulted regarding any changes in the uniforms, provided, however, if there is a disagreement among employees about the uniforms, the employer shall make the final decision. Repeat, the employer shall make the final decision. With this reference, I then, on behalf of the policy committee, opened up negotiation, the impact, said this is what the policy committee is considering. So now, because there's a reference in here, let us talk and see if we can come to an agreement based on what the policy committee is recommending. Of course, they were adamantly opposed to it in terms of the safety issue that was raised, has been raised, the process issue and the cost issue. Suffice it to say that we've, been, we've bargained quite a few times. And on March 22nd, I sent an email to the CSO representative and the president and let them know that all these deliberations back and forth, the committee has now settled on a certain uniform configuration. The khaki pants and the polo shirt of any color, the polo shirt of any color. I said, if you have any more response or reaction to this, let me know by March 31st so I can advise the policy committee again about your additional input. But this is after we've meeting for, for a while. Um, I believe um, it will be meeting since November of this year, if, I, if, I, if I, my opinion is correct. So the point being, the process of getting impact, input from them, has been ongoing. On March 22nd, I let them know the policy committee has now considered everything and they, they have recommended as such. So let me know if there's anything else that I need to take back. Nothing, nothing came back. So on the 21st, of course, I took it back to the committees in, as, as there being no further input. We have disagreed, we've talked it, we've talked it to death at the, at the, at the um, impact bargaining sessions, in all honesty. We just do not agree. And if we don't agree, as this thing says, the district gets to make the final uh, uh, decision. So now, I advise the membership. I said, okay, the policy committee will finish its work and then recommend to the full board. When it gets to the full board, that's, you know, it's open for everybody to come here and air their views. So this is the right forum to come and air your views now. And you will, the board will review this, knowing what the contract says, knowing what the, what the recommendation of the policy revision says, you tell us which way to go, uh, and we can go from there. So again, this has been thoroughly researched in terms of not missing a step. And so it is now at your uh, feet here to kind of decide what to do, and then give us direction for next steps. Thank you, Dr. Eric Jaku. Mr. Walden. Only because you've opened this up. There was about a month ago when, in an executive session that uh, I uh, admit angrily uh, chewed you out, Dr. Jaku, because you had presented to this team the position of the board in regards to these, uh, this uniform. I was angry because you had no direction from this board and you can hear from what we said tonight, that's not where we wanna go. And so you presented them and my anger was, don't go to a bargaining unit here and said, this is the board's position when you didn't have the board's position. And the president very kindly chided me because my tone was not good. So I'm trying to behave and Mr. Klaus is my tone police. So he will kick me if I go, uh, too, too strong on this. But the fact was, you didn't have a position from the board. You're just finding out one tonight. And so um, what I'm saying is I'm still, I think we should still entertain the movement to the table for tonight and move this on is what I'm asking. And your, your table is the table for what period? Um, I think for at least, at least two meetings between the the bargaining unit and the administration, that they have a couple of times to work this out. Can you put a, a date on that uh, for which meeting we would reconsider? 
because I want to make sure we're going to table That's it. Right. I want to the second notice. meeting in May. Second, the second board meeting from this. Okay, it's and uh, for my part, I would like to hear some. Uh, I would like to hear more of the argument for safety um, on this on on this issue. I would like to hear more of that. So, um, if you could develop that argument, I would like to hear it. Um, I appreciate input from Dr. Ike and um, from. Yeah, and oh, 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 go ahead. Just quickly, and just remember, this is a board's committee, right? And Dr. Ike is just, the policy, Dr. Ike is just serving as a facilitator and a guide, working on behalf of, just like the discipline committee, buildings and grounds, Mr. Walder, you're co-chairing that. I, we don't intervene. We just follow the directive of the board, correct? So I just wanted to clarify that, and that's what Dr. Ike is doing. Thank you. And Dr. Rankin? Yeah, um, I have a question since we have kind of gone out of order anyways. Um, since Dr. Ike had a chance to talk, I'm wondering if um, Chief Boone has anything that he wants to say to let us know maybe what their position is. I feel like we gave Dr. Ike the floor. It's only fair to hear both sides. Um, so I know that we're, we're already out of order, so I'm just going to take us a little bit more out of order and see if um, that's something that if Chief Boone is still on, if he's comfortable with. Uh, whatever you guys need me to do, so, uh, if that's okay. Yeah, so I'm curious as to what, um, and again, if you don't feel comfortable and put you on the spot, please let me know what you're, what kind of, um, as the chief of the, I'm going to say all these terms wrong. The chief of police for public schools, I don't know what the, the technical term is. Um, what is your understanding or position on the idea of the uniforms? Uh, what was brought to me was that um, Vice President Wilson had an idea in uniforms where he wanted the khaki and polos during the school week and then extracurricular activities. He wanted the traditional uniform. So that's where my mindset was, was the beginning of talks with the union was going to start there. Um, we went into uh, the meeting, the meetings, that seemed to change, that narrative seemed to change. I don't know where that got mixed up, but that narrative seemed to change. And just things didn't seem like they they were like they were explained to us in the beginning. So I don't know where the mix up is. I don't know where the issue is, but um, things weren't as transparent. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Can we vote on the table? <laughs> we do need to vote on tabling this, uh, this item. Madam Secretary. Mrs. Costick? Aye. Mr. Kloss? Aye. Dr. Reinke? Aye. Mr. Walther? Aye. Mr. Wilson? No. Mrs. Ross? No. President Shaw? Aye. We have two nays, six, seven, I'm sorry, five ayes. The motion carries. Item number 20. Policy number seven, colon 60, students, tuition waiver, non-resident students. And this is a revision to that policy. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion on this item? Hearing none, Madam Secretary. Mrs. Costick? Mr. Claus? Aye. Dr. Rankin? Aye. Mr. Walther? Aye. Mr. Wilson? Aye. Mrs. Ross? Oh, President Shaw? Aye. Do we wait for Ms. Ross? Mm -hmm. Do we wait for Ms. Ross? You have six, right? That's fine. Six eyes. Motion carries. Uh, presentations and suggestions by board members. This is Costi. A quick request that any time that um, um, we are receiving we are receiving changes 
to policies and so forth that um, we receive the what the original information was so the red line so we know what is what it was and what it's going to in the future definitely yeah. Just easier so we know what the change really is I agree that mr. Klaus I have a question regarding the talks of the pilot program for the balance calendar what locations we're looking at and 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 if we can bring the board up to speed on what the what that information looks like okay thank you Dr. Grant. thank you so much mr. K um, the last board meeting there was a conversation about seeing if we could pilot um, took it back to the team um, there were a couple of buildings that were interested and we're going to work with their staff and so far we have one building that's that's um, that have got, gotten some really good actually I have some notes on it um, there's one building and well, anyway, I didn't bring it with me, but we do have one building that's still interested. Um, there were a good consensus of individuals who are interested in ex exploring the the um, the traditional calendar, and uh, there is a a mock-up of it. I have a a mock-up a mock-up of it, a write-up of it, a draft of it. And uh, starting, for example, in, there is, there is um, Teacher Institute, for example, July 30th, and then it's the 45 two weeks, and then you have August, you have September, then you would be, there would be two weeks fall break for October. November, we have the four days off for Thanksgiving. December, the two weeks, the normal two weeks for, for vacation, um, and then March. So we're, we're moving along. There's some other things we have to look at in terms of summer school, but we do have a building that's really in a good place, and they're interested in, I think, 100% of them. Even when asked, let's see, mm, 24 were in favor and 19 were neutral, and uh, was it seven that were opposed? So the supermajority were interested. And um, and and so, yeah. Does that help at all? So we're down to one that's interested in piloting. And there's any pilot change? Is that approved by the board, President Shaw? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. We would bring it to the board for sure. Yeah, yes, that's absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, because it was a board directive to say, hey, can you go back and talk to your members and your staff and see if they would be interested in in trying this out for the year. Okay. And I have a question along with that. Dr. Rankin. Um, so just to be clear, is it the modified or the balanced schedule that you were aiming for? Modified. Modified. Uh -huh. um, and then one school you said is... Um, thinking about it, and so from what I just heard, you're gonna bring it to the board for a consensus or for a vote, since it's a calendar change. My understanding is that for calendar changes, it's a vote by the board. We can bring it for a vote. Okay, I just yeah. didn't know. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Other suggestions from board members? Seeing none, reports from board committees. <clears throat> yes, uh, President Shaw, um, the policy committee will meet next on May 19th May at 3 o'clock. May 19th at 3 o'clock. 3.30. 3.30. Well, thank you. 
Mr. Walt? The Building and Grounds Committee, uh, we're having our first town hall meeting um, in a couple of days here in this room in regards to Thomas Jefferson. Um, and so we had, I had discussed with Thomas about the safest place to have it, and we thought it would be better to have it here than, than at Thomas Jefferson because we have the technology for some people to come in here and other people to zoom in to answer, answer those questions. And um, Vice President Wilson, if you could be kind enough to join us at that meeting, we would love to have you here because I think there may be some questions that go back to your original proposal. Um, and there's a thing, I think there's a waiver we can do that would allow all the board members to come if they choose to in that being a voting kind of committee mm -hmm. for that. The second one is the regular building committee meeting. I'm gonna defer to Ms. Ross as to when we scheduled the next one or if we have done that yet. And if we have it, we'll get back together on that. Okay, we haven't scheduled that. We'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> Thanks, Ms. Kostick. Ross. We have legal on the line because for us to meet in this room, I think I, I don't think we can meet in this room. I, I mean, we have technology in the other big room, but as far as a town hall meeting, I don't think we can meet in this particular room. I'll defer to legal. Uh, I, it e was really e basic. Either way, we have great options. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. That's a great question, and I actually would have to look up the answer. Because I'm not sure. We'll help us all. They will put signs if we don't. And okay, if we move it from here, we need to put the, signs for that. Yeah. We're just, we're just trying to get input from the community on that. All right. Ms. Costi has No, Ms. Costi. Mr. Walter, um, you alluded to the fact of, like, we were going to have more than one meeting? Um, we had in the past had more than one. And Mr. Or President Shaw had asked that question and stuff too. And uh, we may at our next board meeting discuss if you want to do more than one. Uh, I just wanted to get input from the board. We, we said that our past, we did two when we did the, the previous meeting that we had with um, the Mrs. other school where we named the team. We did two. Uh, Mrs. Jackson thought that it would be better to have two, one at the school, which we did at the school, but because of COVID, I think things are a little changed. And then we had one at another part of the district, a second one after that. Uh, I'm amenable to whatever the board wants to do after that. I just wanted to see what we wanted to do. So we've only scheduled one meeting. My thought process on that is that because of the fact that um, we've been talking about this since maybe around September or August or somewhere around there, I don't think it's necessary that we would have two. The, this meeting that we're having is kind of the cultivation of everything okay. we're going to say, you know, just because of the fact that it's been out there for a while. Right. Um, you know, we've, we've talked to, you know, we've let the public know this is what's going on, and this is just the, the end of it, you know, for the final input. So I don't, no, I don't I'm, think I'm it's fine with them as that's the board's That's the board's wish. I'm, I'm good with it. Okay. All right. Any other input from board members? Is there a motion to adjourn? Moved and seconded. Those in favor? Opposed?